Hey everyone, I'm Jesse Hart of Full Circle Phenomenal. Welcome to the Sacred Full Art Channel. Today, I'm coming to you from San Jose in Costa Rica on our drive around the world. We're calling Unite the World Firsthand. And we have another person who travels around the world who does floor arts as well, Jill Maglio. Hi, Jill. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello. Thank you for having me. So where are you at today? I know that you're traveling around the world right now. I'm actually in Greece right now. I made it to Greece a few days ago. Wonderful. How is it there? It's great. It's warm. It's, things are starting to open up. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. It cool. feels like coming back home in a way. So Jill is what I like to co coin the phrase Floanthropist. She does a lot of really wonderful things for people all around the world. So I wanted to connect with her and get a little bit more understanding about how she has turned her flow arts into an occupation and how she's also, like myself, turned it into a lucrative job that enables her to travel around the world and connect flow arts to the worldly community. So without further ado, I just have a few questions for you and uh, just answer them however you like. So first off, I wanted to know, and I feel that our uh, viewers would like to know, what led you to flow arts in the first place, and what made you decide to make it your occupation? I was first inspired by fire ploy in the early 2000s. I, I loved learning different sequences um, and combining the moves together, also choreography. And at that time, not many people were teaching ploy, so there was a small community of us in Santa Cruz that really had to problem solve and create different ways to move the poi around our bodies and I think that not immediate process of gaining a skill resulted in a lot of satisfaction and intrinsic motivation and self-efficacy and for me um, that was the beginning of wanting to continue exploring moving my body with different props and also with dance perfect that's amazing so you're you call yourself an you're an occupational therapist um, what did you do to combine floors into that vocation? Yeah, it was, it was a bit of a process. Um, well, first, before I we went to school, back to school to do OT, flow arts provided me personally with a balance of self-care, productivity, and leisure, which in occupational therapy are considered determinants of health. So it also, and it also opened up a world of travel for me that included an international community, a circus family of people that had like interests. So I think the flow arts were for me, my own occupational therapy before I even knew what OT was. And as an OT student, I did my final project on community circus and life skills. And that was the beginning of a long and continual research and practice journey of using circus as an educational and therapeutic tool. Wow. Working with various populations and also continuing my own training and professional development, I've been able to gather enough evidence to support the continuation of using circus as a form of occupational therapy for people with learning differences, special needs, and sociopolitical challenges. You know, the health sciences in academia can be a little rigid in what they consider evidence-based hmm. and evidence-based practice, and this is also what makes innovation difficult. And because circus use by OTs is an innovative practice area, there's not that much external scientific data in this area. So what we do is we utilize, me and the small other group of OTs that do this work, we utilize something called the evidence-based triad, which is a combination of external scientific evidence, patient, client, participant perspectives, and also um, the, the facilitator's perceptions as well. And through that, through that body of knowledge that we gather from all those sources, it gives enough evidence for us to ethically use circus as a therapeutic and educational tool. Wow, perhaps I, can, I would love to get a link yeah, for more information on that for anybody else out there who's looking to actually continue to level up the flow arts industry with the health industry, as I know that's becoming more and more of a possibility. I interviewed Dr. Kate Van Riegel a few weeks ago, and she's got some studies who have been like professionally published and got her doctorate on it. And I just, I feel we need more, more of that evidence. So it's so clear to each of us individually how well it does for our physical, mental, and emotional health. 
but yeah, we need to get more studies out there done by the books. And so that's that's the thing. Like it, it, the way you do that is by entering in academia, mm-hmm. which also could be a very kind of rigid process. So that's how you get the scientific stuff, like people like um, Dr. Kate, who's who's phenomenal. And um, so yeah, I, I don't have a link, especially to that. But I say if someone is interested in education or occupational therapy or neuroscience and just looking looking more doing some searches about about papers i know there's more literature right now about social circus than have been in the past so Mm -hmm. that might be a good art on google scholar yeah but what we do as ot's you know what we do know we do know some stuff from the external scientific evidence and we're able to apply it when using circus as the medium for a therapeutic purpose for example we know how motor learning works in the brain. So repetition of specific motor patterns result in improved quality of movement as well as energy efficiency. So using poi or juggling or whatever with that knowledge, we can help facilitate therapeutic goals related to motor learning. We also know um, a lot of evidence about trauma. We know that trauma effect affects the prefrontal cortex of the brain. And we know the prefrontal cortex of the brain is responsible for working memory and a bunch of other executive functions like initiation or an organization. So when addressing trauma, circus activities and flow arts can be facilitated specifically to increase these capacities because we're working on mindfulness a lot of the times within the flow arts. Mm-hmm. Cool. That makes sense. Yeah, no, massively. Thank you for that. Uh, one of your organizations is Holistic circus therapy what is that and who is benefiting from it so holistic circus therapy is an occupational therapy private practice that operates as a social enterprise so we we provide direct client services to people that have a prescription to receive occupational therapy from a school or at a center and we also provide professional development trainings and group workshops so right now currently middle school kids in the new york city public school district are benefiting from holistic circus therapy, the OT sessions for about another day until the school year ends. Mm. And also people who are attending the professional development trainings that we're offering online. And the social enterprise part, the way that works is circus aid participants also benefit because all of the profits that come from holistic circus therapy activities fund the circus aid projects. Okay, so yeah, circus aid is the other organization that you have. Um, What is it, and where in the world is it being implemented? Circus Aid is the social development branch of the integrated business model. And Circus Aid provides free services to displaced persons and people that experience hardship either environmentally or sociopolitically internationally. And, you know, pre-COVID, we ran Circus Aid projects in the Calais jungle in France, in Lesbos, Greece, Athens, Cetis, Yanina in Greece, and also in Lombok, Indonesia. In this July, uh, we'll do a couple local community events in Corfu in Greece, where we built the dome and have a lot of our infrastructure. And then in September, we're scheduled to return back um, to the refugee communities we've worked with previously in Lebanon, Greece. So we're really excited about that. Super. Uh, what is your current primary focal point for your organizations? So right now, so the one month residency we have planned in Northern Greece for this coming September is definitely the one of our biggest priorities right now. And another one is a new collaboration with an organization I've started working with in Mexico called Coco Lectivo. And I'll return there in January in 2021. We have a training program there where international artists can come learn social circus pedagogy, train with professional circus performance artists there, and contribute to the local community, as well as gain skills and professional experience in both performance and the education side of circus arts, flow arts, and community health. Awesome. Uh, What would you recommend to someone who would like to turn flow arts into a profession? First, keep playing. You know, that'll naturally attract opportunities and ideas. And I think sometimes when we get, we we enter into a more business uh, mindset, we forget to play. 
right? And it's through like the play and through being an actual flow that we have ideas and that we're inspired and that we connect with people. So that's the first thing is make sure that you, you, you just keep playing. And second, I'd say increase your professional capacity and opportunities by learning more than just your favorite prop. Learn performance skills if you really want to perform. Learn about pedagogy if you want to teach. Learn about community development if you want to use flow arts in that way. Think through gaining knowledge and skills in multiple areas. We become more familiar with what we're drawn to, what we want to focus on, and also who we want to partner with and collaborate with. Gosh, great answer. Great answer. Uh, How can someone get involved and assist you remotely as well as in person? Great question. Um, first of all, remotely, we actually have our we have um, an online training, and it's um, it's flexible, scheduled with people's timelines, people's you know how, what works in their schedule, and it's available until July thirtieth, and it's it's fifteen hours. It includes three two hour Zoom lectures live with me, and then some self directed learning. And so attending that professional development training, and I could provide you a link to share about the PDF or the information on the learning objectives and what people will leave with. Mm -hmm. And people can also email me for details about that. Um, So that's one way. The second way is, yeah, email me to discuss either participation in a a Greek or Mexico project, and we'll see what, what the best fit is for people. And then, yeah, follow Circus Aid on Instagram and check out our website. Um, circusaid.com to get some more background of, you know, the work that we do and see, you know, what aligns for people. Great. Awesome. Um, and then a couple just more, uh, more relaxed, more just personal questions about you. Uh, do you have a favorite flow prop? What is it and why? Definitely Poi. I mean, Poi was my introduction into a whole new world and a whole new way of being, being in my body and um, binding um, training and discipline with also improvisation and freedom. So, yeah, that was the, the start for me of, I think, entering into a part of my brain that I maybe haven't been in before. Are you still working just two Poi or have you gone on to three or four? No, just two. Just the two, yeah. yeah. I'm just starting to dabble with the, the three poi with uh, teaching and learning with two poi in one hand and man it's it's its own own thing. Now we're going into the finger dexterity and stuff. It's awesome though. Okay, and then I, I'm I'm curious. Do you have a favorite flow artist? Who is it and why? I do. It's someone I recently met when I was in Mexico a few months ago. His name is Makoki, and he's he's a hand balancer, a dancer, a clown. Um, a juggler residing in Zipolite, and he's also part of the Coco Collectivo organization I referred to earlier. Um, his integration of stillness, movement, humor, presence, connection with the audience are impeccable, um, in my opinion. And um, he also performs with his family, his wife and his son, and that's really beautiful to watch. Um, he's also a really great teacher of social focus, dance, and acrobatics. So I say, I think. Yeah, he's probably my favorite flow artist at the moment. Awesome, awesome. Well, I love I love hearing about new people I've not heard about before, so I'll definitely check him out. Um, that's all I've got for you today. Do you have any closing remarks or anything that you would like our viewers to check out or connect with you? Um, no, I just invite them to connect with me. I mean, it would be great. I'd love to, yeah, see how we, how I can collaborate with more people for circus aid projects. If people are interested in the training or coming and joining and yeah, I guess I should just, I'll send you a link to stuff and you can post it with the interview. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just please just get in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time sharing with us a little bit about what you do and encouraging flow artists all around the world. It really means a lot to me and I'm sure a lot of other people. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. This video was created by Full Circle Phenomenal. For more on yoga, wellness consulting, and flow arts fire spinning, check us out on the web and social media.